y'all, what's up? My name is Avery, and today I am finally going to be talking about all the books that I read in July. <laughs> August is literally almost over, but I was kind of dreading making this video because there are 24 books that I have to talk about today, which is a lot. So I'm just gonna get started, talk about all the books that I read. In total, I read 24 books, as I just said. 12 of those were audiobooks, 10 were ebooks, and two were physical reads. Now, we're going to be talking about first the three books that I reread in the month of July. And then after that, we're going to be going into my normal format where I talk about my least favorite and work all the way up to my favorite at the end of the video. So the first reread that I'm going to be talking about today is Cinder by Marissa Meyer, the first book in the Lunar Chronicles. So my lovely friend Deja over at Deja Soar, I'm linking her channel down below. I absolutely adore her. I think on Instagram one day, I posted a fan art of Winter and Jason from this series on my insta story because it was beautiful i love that couple so very much and deja responded saying that she loves them and i said i love them and she's like i haven't read the series in a long time and i said i haven't either so we decided we kind of wanted to do a series buddy read together to reread all the books we're going to be buddy reading scarlet very very soon and scarlet is her favorite book in the series so i'm so excited to read it with her if you didn't know this is a young adult sci-fi series dealing with all reimaginings of disney fairy tales this one is a reimagining of cinderella but if cinderella was a cyborg in this futuristic dystopian society that these people live in this book is so good this series is amazing it is one of my favorite series of all time it will forever be a favorite series of all time this definitely gets a five out of five stars from me. Next, we're going to be talking about another favorite of mine, and that is Barbarian's Redemption by Ruby Dixon. This is a part of the Ice Pen Barbarian series, if you could not tell. I am caught up on this series. I have been for a while now. I'm going to be talking about another book in the spinoff series in a little bit, but I was having a pretty rough time during july if you want all the details you can go watch my reading rush wrap up i talk about it in there but i was having a pretty rough time last month so i really just needed a pick-me-up and so I, I i picked this one up as a pick-me-up this is my favorite book in the ice of Barbarian series this is book number 12. now i know a lot of people don't get to this book so not a lot of people can say that this is also their favorite book but it is my favorite book in the series. I think this is the only book that I've given five stars to or 4.5 stars to. I love it so much. This one is about Beck and Ellie and Ellie is mute because she was in the alien slave trade starting at a very, very, very young age and she's very traumatized from that. Beck kind of gets a redemption arc in this book because he is kind of hated on by the other people in their tribe in the earlier books. I just loved his redemption story. I loved Ellie like coming into her own self and it was beautiful. I love this one so much. It's my favorite in the entire series. If you've read this series, please let me know what your favorite book in this series is. I'd love to know. But again, I love this couple very much and um, I just need to pick me up so I reread this one. As many of y'all know, I am trying to continue with the Beautiful Bastard series by Christina Lauren. So I decided to finally reread Beautiful Stranger. And this is book number two in the series. Now this one is a romance between a woman and a man who is from England, I'm pretty sure. And she just moved to New York City to get away from her ex and make a new start in her life. Our main character, Max, Stella, is somewhat known as a ladies man, but once he sets his sight on our main character, Heroine, it's all out the window. He just wants to be with her and doesn't know why he only wants to be with her. And their romance basically starts by them meeting in this club and them like hooking up in semi-public and our main character woman has never done anything like that before so she was shocked and baffled that she actually wanted to do something like that and so it just explores what they want to do as a couple together later on in the book and they go to clubs and stuff like that i <laughs> really liked this book i gave it a four out of five stars i think i gave it a four out of five stars the first time that i read it too i just i love this series this series is very 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 steamy they're probably steamiest works that they've written together and I just can't help but have a very fun time reading them. Okay now we're going to be talking about my least favorite to my favorite books of the month. First my least favorite book of the month 
was Escape the Sea by G. Bailey. This is the first book in the Saved by the Pirates series and I read this one off of Kindle Unlimited. Now, first of all, the cover intrigued me, as you can see. I was very hooked by the cover. And then I was also hooked even more by the fact that I found out this is a reverse harem pirate book, which sounded so good. What I failed to know going into it is that they're all young adult age, or most of them are, our main character heroine is, and this reads like a young adult book. Like nothing happens, like nothing at all. <laughs> I was so let down. I was so let down. Like, like nothing happened in this book. This, so basically this whole premise is that in this fantasy land that they live in, this world that they live in, there's like different islands and each island produces a certain thing, but each island is basically in poverty and the king on the, the king's island rules everything and is super duper rich. And each island basically has like an advisor to the king that rules over that island. And our main character heroine is the daughter to one of those advisors in her island. It's when some people are born, they're born with like a, a triangle or a mark on their face, which indicates to people that they are a changed one. Now I don't necessarily remember what that means. I believe that means they have magic or will have magic. By decree of the king, every single baby that is born with a mark on their forehead or a, or a triangle on their forehead is executed at birth. Our main character woman's father obviously did not want to kill his child, so he's kept her secret in his house, in his mansion for like what 19 18 17 years i don't remember how old she is until one day someone finds out who she is and she escapes and these pirates save her and there's all these men on this pirate ship and all of them like her and it sounded so promising but nothing happened and then all of the male love interests were basically all the same besides one and i could not tell any of them apart it was just super boring very boring let me down unfortunately i gave this one a 2.5 out of 5 stars next i have pretty human by ruby dixon and this is an alien romance novella written by her so our main character named vera he's a blue sakui male and this is takes place on their home planet not on the ice planet that ice planet barbarians takes place on this is basically the planet where the aliens from ice planet originate from so Varric lives on this planet and he is invited to this getaway retreat kind of thing in this mansion where all the elite go to there he sees a human woman being given as a gift to another alien and he decides that he wants her instead to be his mate and to take her from the guy that she's a gift to and so it's them getting to know each other and then them falling in love for each other and it was just super duper short it wasn't that well developed and the insta love wasn't really my thing normally ruby dixon's insta love stories are like good to me this one just missed the target for me unfortunately i ended up giving this one a three out of five stars that one is also on kindle unlimited if you want to check it out next we have queen of the wildwood by angela j ford this is the first book in the tales of the enchanted wood series and this is also on kindle unlimited okay so this is about our main character named eula and eula ends up accidentally murdering her entire village including her family because she couldn't control her powers and so she sent to this basically um, nunnery where they teach people or women how to control their magic. But then something happens there to where she's in a lot of trouble and needs to go find the Dark Queen. And the Dark Queen is very evil and she knows that the Dark Queen is her only option to resolve the issue that she has. Um, and on her journey to find the Dark Queen, there she sees one of the Dark Queen's knights who she actually has a past with. It's just their story going to go find the Dark Queen and possibly try to get help from her or conquer her. This sounded super intriguing, like super intriguing. This is very short. I'm pretty sure it's under 100 pages. This book would be so amazing if it was longer and was more developed and we got that backstory from our two main characters because they knew each other before the story and just like it needed more. There wasn't enough for me. So I ended up giving this one three out of five stars. Next we have Amari's Mistake by Ruby Dixon. This is book number 11 in the Ice Home series. And this one is about a main character named Mari, who you meet in the very first Ice Home book. And we kind of get her story a little bit in that book, but this one delves more into her story and what happened to her and her mate. When she was mated back in the first book, her mate was actually injured. So um, in order to help him, um, she asked the healer to turn their 
cooey off and the cooey is a parasite in your body that indicates to you when your mate is near and helps for procreation. It's a couple months later and the cooey has not turned back on and she feels nothing for her mate. Like she just wants to feel love from him again and like nothing is working. Um, so she's kind of given up. But her mate to Chai has not given up. So um, he's on the journey to try and help her turn her cooey back on and help them fall back in love. This is not my favorite book in the series. <laughs> um, unfortunately, we get a lot of them from the first book in the Ice Home series and the first 30% of Mari's mistake is just like what happened in the first Ice Home book, which was kind of boring to me and like I already knew what was gonna happen and I already knew what was going on. So it was just pretty boring to me and then the whole thing about trying to turn their Kiwi back on, just none of it like was exciting to me, none of it was intriguing to me, I wasn't swooning at all. Like. I don't know, their romance just wasn't a romance I was excited to read about, unfortunately. So I only gave this one three out of five stars. Next, I have Signs of Attraction by Laura Brown. This is a romance that takes place in college, so it's a new adult romance. Our main character, Hero, is completely deaf, and our main character, Heroine, is hard of hearing. She's not completely deaf, but she needs hearing aids to help her hear. Before I go into this book, this has a bunch of trigger warnings. This book was way deeper than I thought it was going to be and dealt with a lot of deep, deep subjects. Okay, so there's a trigger warning for physical abuse, emotional abuse, and even drug use. So um, I was not expecting any of that going into this book. Our main character heroine has never met anybody else who is hard of hearing or who is deaf until one day in her first class at college. Our main character Reed introduces himself to her and they kind of become friends and he teaches her how to use certain technologies and certain things to help her with her hearing. That sounded super intriguing to me. The first couple of pages, couple of chapters were absolutely fantastic to me, but I don't think that this writing style or this author is necessarily for me. I didn't really believe their love story at all, unfortunately, and they just didn't, it didn't connect to me. And our main character, Heroine, deals with a lot of trauma and a lot of things, as many of the trigger warnings I just said. She ends up coming in contact with her abuser and then she goes to drugs to help her cope with that. And it was really hard for me to read at points. It just, it was a little bit too deep for me and a little bit like too, like jarring for me. I just, I wasn't expecting this in this college romance book. I don't know, maybe someone else will like that. Maybe you'll like this book. I thought it was just too deep for my taste. I didn't connect to this story at all. I normally love books that have ASL in it because I've been trying to learn ASL and I've come in contact with people who communicate through ASL. So um, I normally love those books and some of my favorite books of all time deal with characters who use ASL are of hard of hearing or are mute and I thought this was going to be a new favorite of all time for me. Unfortunately that wasn't the case and it just unfortunately left like a kind of bad taste in my mouth because I couldn't connect to anything in this story and I didn't believe their romance and it was so so insta lovey. Again it might work for you it's just not my cup of tea unfortunately. Next we have Secret Santa by Katie Wilde. I read this book for the Christmas in Julyathon and I had so much fun reading this. This is a romance between Emma and Logan and Emma is hired at this kind of like wood making company and she's a big budgeter because she grew up as an orphan in the foster care system and so she is so grateful to finally have this job but ever since she started working there the boss's son Logan is always giving her like these death glares and like she has no idea why. It's close to Christmas time and so the company really wants to do a secret Santa and Logan may or may not be the person who draws her name out of the hat. This book really kickstarted my love for Christmas romances because I hadn't read like any before this. I just had so much fun reading this one and I definitely recommend this book if you're wanting to get into the Christmas spirit. I read this off of Kindle Unlimited and I gave this one a 3.75 out of 5 stars. Next we're going to be getting into my four star reads. First we have Plus One by Alethea Romig. I listened to this one off of Audible Escape and this was a recommendation 
Foundation by Steph from Steph's Romance Book Talk. And you can watch my live reaction to reading this book in my booktube friends pick my TBR video, which will be linked down below. So this one is super fun. Our heroine and our hero work in the same office. Our hero is our heroine's boss. And she ends up catching him in kind of a compromising position with another employee at their office and she kind of works for HR. So our main character heroine needs to go to a family wedding very soon and her mother will not live it down if she goes without a date. So she proposes an arrangement to her boss saying, I won't report you to HR if you come to this wedding with me and pretend to be my date. And little does she know that her boss has actually had a huge crush on her for a very long time. And so he views this as a huge opportunity to finally get her to like see him romantically. I had such a fun time reading this one. Thanks Steph for the recommendation. I absolutely adored it. It was just super duper fun, super duper fast. I loved the audiobook. The narrators were amazing. I only gave this one four stars because unfortunately it's not my favorite thing of all time, but I still had such a very fun time reading it. Next we have All He Wants for Christmas by Katie Wilde. This was another book that I read for the Christmas in July-a-thon. Now this one was my favorite out of the two Katie Wilde Christmas books that I read last month. So this one is about our main character named Cole who is a detective and kind of like the richest man in town comes to him one day and tells him that his daughter is moving out of the house and moving into the apartment building that Cole is staying in and he's wondering if like he'll check up on his daughter and like make sure she's not getting into any trouble if he sees anything to report back to him. Cole doesn't necessarily agree to this because he doesn't want to invade his daughter's privacy but he just says yes to get him to leave him alone and be quiet. But a couple of months ago before he was given this proposition, he was actually shot in the leg. And before the ambulance could come and save him, this woman kind of helps him and keeps him conscious before the paramedics can come. And through that experience, he like is entranced by this woman who saved him and wants to find her and thank her and possibly ask her out on a date. Little does he know that that woman who is his guardian angel is actually the woman that that man asked him to look after in his building. It was super fun. Again, I am loving Katie Wilde's books and this one was such like a joy and a fun time to read. I can definitely recommend this one if you're wanting to get into the Christmas spirit. Next we have another Ruby Dixon book. We have The Aliens Mail Order Bride. Now this one was super fun. I loved this one. M. Vor, who is a Sakui male living on this planet Rizda that is just basically like a farm planet where a lot of soldiers come and a lot of refugees come to basically escape their troubled past. And so Evmore was a soldier, he really needs somebody to help take care of him and help him work on this farm. And so he decides to get a mail order bride online and he really wants it to be a woman of his same race because the women of his Sukui race are very strong and fit and can really help him around the farm. Little does he know that when he goes to pick up his mail order bride, it's a human woman instead. It was super duper short, it was super duper fun. Now this, romance is much more my speed way more than the other ruby dixon novella that i read this month this one was super duper cute really sweet i loved how our main character heroine loved to bake and like just take care of him and oh it was so 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 sweet i ended up giving this one a four out of five stars next we have rush by candy steiner the first book in the palm south university series i really wanted to participate in the psu readathon that was going along with Jess, Melissa, and Mina. Um, I think those were the three hosts. I really wanted to participate. I unfortunately only read this one book out of the readathon just because they were super long and I was very intimidated by trying to read each one in a week. I just couldn't do it. But I was very intrigued by this book and this series and I might continue on with the series. Basically, instead of this book being told in chapters, it's told in episodes. So it very much reads like a like CW college drama filled show. It was really entertaining. So there are a vast number of characters. I had such a fun time. It was full of drama, steamy times. Like it was it was literally like a CW college TV show. It was very entertaining. I just had a super duper fun time reading this and I ended up giving it a four out of five stars. Then I ended up reading The Truth About Cowboys by Lisa Renee Jones. This was another read for the Christmas and July-a-thon that fit a cowboy prompt. Now this was my first ever cowboy romance and I had a very fun time reading it. This is a modern day romance. It's just basically a contemporary romance if it took place on a ranch. I live in Texas, I love ranches, so I had a very fun time reading this. Our main 
main character, a woman, uh, just dumped her ex. I believe she caught him cheating. She really wants to just get away, find a new place to take photography and find a new job basically. So she finds on, I think Zillow, this cabin for rent in Texas and she decides to go for it. And on her way there, she gets stuck in the mud. Her car gets stuck in the mud in the town that the cabin's in and this gruff man who's very abrasive helps her out of it basically she calls him a jerk and she goes on her way little does she know that the man who rescued her is jason who owns the ranch that the little cabin is on and he just happens to be an ex uh baseball player and he runs this ranch and it was very cute very sweet i had such a fun time there hate to love romance was super duper duper interesting to read about it was also really steamy so just letting y'all know again very fun time reading this it was just an amazing audiobook i really recommend and i gave this one a four out of five stars it's also an audible escape if you'd like to check it out next i have easy by tamara weber this was recommended to me by nicole from who picked this book this was another book in my booktube friends pick my tbr video and this is a new adult romance it takes place in college and this deals a lot with sexual assault so big trigger warning for that so our main character heroine is in this horrible situation in the first chapter of this book and our hero ends up being her savior and saving her from something horrible happening to her she can't help but be totally intrigued by him after that whole incident and little does she know that he has had a huge crush on her in their college class that they take together he is also into art so there's that art aspect in it that was so much fun to read about it's very deep and deals with a lot of deep subjects so just beware going into it. The next book that I'm going to talk about today is Neighborly by Christina Jackson. Now this one is super steamy, super steamy. <laughs> I've heard Brie talk about it, I've heard Riley talk about it, I've heard Mina talk about it, everyone's reading it. So I had to pick it up. Basically this is about two couples, one married couple who lives in this house and they have renovated the duplex next to that, I'm pretty sure, and they've rented it out to this couple who just moved to town who are dating. And the man in that couple is, a MMA fighter I want to say um, so there's that sports aspect to it and then when the two women from the couples meet they are very attracted to one another and so it's basically a roommate story with the four of them and the husband and boyfriend kind of encouraging these women to explore their feelings with one another and like them not being shamed for the way that they feel and them just experiencing that and it was so good i loved this so much it was so much fun and i ended up giving this one four stars next we have neanderthal seeks human by penny reed the first book in the knitting in the city series this one i listened to off of audible escape and i literally had an amazing time reading this one so our main character heroine Janie is super clumsy and quirky and I just related to her so much she's kind of like the nerdy girl she likes to spit out random factoids when she's like nervous and I loved that so Janie breaks up with her ex and is fired in the same day which sucks and on her way out a security guard who she's had a huge crush on and is found really attractive ends up like walking her out of the building basically just to escort her out of the building and he might help her get a new job in a company that he works for and little does she know he might be the boss of that company and isn't actually a security guard it is really sweet and cute our hero just like loves the quirks about Janie and like just embraces her random factoids and her nerdiness and it was so sweet i can't wait to continue with the series i think book number two is about their wedding so again another very fun and entertaining read the next two books are novellas a part of the beautiful bastard series by christina lauren the first book is this book i'm covering up the bad word obviously um this is a novella in between book one and two so number 1.5 and this little novella just takes place immediately after book number one about bennett and chloe and it was super duper duper sweet and cute and just had really fun time reading it again four to five stars and the next one is beautiful bombshell which is number 2.5 and this incorporates both couples from book one and book two and this is all about our heroes bachelor party from the first book and um how the ladies and the couples incorporate themselves into that bachelor party and it was super steamy really really fun again 
really liked it four stars next i have autobiography by christina lauren this is another book a part of my booktube friends pick my tbr video this was recommended to me by brie from in love and words so thank you brie for recommending this one to me this has lgbtqia plus rep in it and it's a young adult book i just like really enjoyed my time reading this one which again if you watch that video i did not expect to i have previously read a young adult book by christina lauren their only other young adult book and it was one of the worst books I've ever read in my entire life. So I was very nervous going into this one, but this one was so good. So our main character named Tanner gets in this class in high school, his senior year, um, where basically you try and write a novel in one semester in a couple of months. And he thinks it'll be easy peasy. And then the TA to this class, whose name is Sebastian, and Tanner has a huge crush on him. <laughs> and I believe Tanner is bisexual and then our main our other main character is Sebastian he is actually Mormon and he is kind of struggling with his faith and his family and his sexuality and it was so deep and like so interesting to read about because I personally don't know a lot about the Mormon faith I just had a super interesting time reading about this I was tearing up it made me so emotional this is a subject I'm very passionate about as you can see in that video it really impacted me thank you so much brie for recommending this one to me here we have another book from my booktube friends pick my tbr video we have a promise of fire by amanda boucher this was recommended to me by my lovely friend ashley from ash Heart books she has been dying for me to read this book for so long and i've been dying to read it for so long and so she picked this one for me to read and oh my word do I love this book. This is a fantasy romance book where a main character named Kat is pretending to be a soothsayer in a circus and she's actually something called a kingmaker and they only appear once every 200 years. There's only one that exists and they have like these astronomical amazing powers that no one else has. Our main character hero named Griffin actually conquered a neighboring land and put his sister on the throne and he's looking for something or somebody to help keep his sister on that throne. And so he comes in contact with Kat and realizes who she is and kidnaps her. And it is their hate to love romance. It was so amazing. The banter is literally top notch. It is amazing. If you love fantasy romance, if you love fantasy books in general, this is the book for you. It is so incredibly amazing. I, of course, gave this book a five out of five stars. Next, we have the last book from my booktube friends pick my TBR video. We have The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is recommended to me by my lovely friend Jen from Jen's Bookshelf. This is my first time reading it, so I was very, very, very late to the game. So our main character named Evelyn Hugo was this big Hollywood starlet decades ago, and um, it's years, years later, and our main character named Monique has been asked by Evelyn Hugo to write her memoir. Monique has no idea why because she doesn't know Evelyn Hugo at all. Basically, Evelyn Hugo is telling her life story to Monique, which nobody else knows about. It was so amazing. I loved this. I get why people love this book. The hype is so well deserved. It's amazing. The plot twist blew my mind, even though I should have known what the plot twist was. It seemed to be like right there on the page. I just didn't put two and two together. So um, I had such a fun time reading this. I loved our characters, all the characters. Evelyn Hugo is a horrible person, obviously, but you can't help but like be super intrigued by her and honestly think that she's a real person in real life. Like it was so good five to five stars for me okay next i have forever right now by emma scott so i actually talked about this book in my favorite romances of 2020 so far and this book and the next book that i'm going to be talking about are amazing so this is about our main character named darlene she moves to san francisco to get a new start in life because recently she just got out of a rehab and a couple years ago she had a huge drug problem but she has since grown from that and knows she will never ever go back to that life and really wants to start a new life and start her dance career all over again. And in the apartment that she rents out, there is a neighbor below her that has piqued her interest. His name is Sawyer and he is in college to become a lawyer. He's actually also a single father. A couple months ago, a baby was left on Sawyer's doorstep when he was partying at his frat. And so he has like completely changed his whole entire life and 
changed what he wants to do with his life because of his daughter Olivia and just wants to keep his daughter Olivia safe and well fed and well provided for. And so Darlene and Sawyer meet and they can't help but be intrigued by one another but Sawyer doesn't want a relationship because he really doesn't want to confuse Olivia at all and Darlene completely accepts that but they can't help but have these feelings for one another. It's like an amazing friends to lovers romance. It was so good. It deals with like such a deep subject matter. Like it it's so good y'all. I haven't heard anybody talk about this book. Please, 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 please read it. It is so good. Five out of five stars from me. The last book that I'm going to be talking about today is The Silent Waters by Brittany C. Cherry. This one is an audible escape as well as the last book that I just talked about is also an audible escape if you want to check it out. This is the third book in the Elements series. I think this is my favorite in the series so far. This book actually takes place in three different time periods. The first time period is when our main character woman Maggie May is actually like 9 or 10 and then it jumps to when she's around 18 and then it jumps to I believe when she's around 25 or 26. At the beginning of this book Maggie May and her father move into Maggie May's father's new wife's house and she basically gets a new mother. Also with her new mother she has a new brother and a new sister and her new brother has a friend. Right when she meets his friend, she has decided that is her husband at age nine, that's her husband. And so she decides to go to the woods one day to get married to him. And when she's in the woods that day, she witnesses something she should not have witnessed. And from that day on, she doesn't say a single word. Our main character hero, Brooks, really tries to help Maggie May and become her friend. It is a beautiful friends to lovers romance. And um, Brooks actually also becomes a rock star so this is actually a rock star romance that I didn't really mind because there wasn't like anything almost in it the family stuff in here pulled on my heartstrings the romance in here the trauma she experiences it is it is like so amazing I loved this so much five out of five stars for sure there you have it I've been talking for literally an hour <laughs> um uh please let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to but anyways thank you all so so much for watching I will see y'all soon in my next one bye <laughs>